Perhaps you've been in the same situation as I have. When we're out and about on a backpacking trip or a bikepacking trip or even on a motorcycle trip, it's very important to keep your devices charged up when you're on some kind of adventure. Now, for many years, I've been using a panel from Decathlon. It's the 4 class 915 watt panel. It's been working quite well. However, I thought to myself, maybe it's time to get an upgrade. So after a little bit of research, I managed to find a solar panel, which is coming from Big Blue. So they've been in the business for probably about seven or eight years, maybe even more than that now. So what we'll be doing in this video is we'll be able to do a bit of an unboxing and I'll explain to you some of the special features and the specification about the big blue panel, the Solar Power 30. And then following on from that, we'll do a quick comparison comparing the big blue Solar Power 30 watt panel against the Decathlon 4 Class 900 15 watt panel. Now for a bit of context, I've noticed that solar panels seem to get better as time goes on. In the last five years, solar panels have really come on and basically they're getting smaller in footprint for double the amount of power. I am noticing with residential panels how they're getting substantially more powerful as time goes on. So this is why I thought to myself, maybe it's time to make an upgrade to my backpacking and my bikepacking setup when it comes to the solar that I use. I've only had the panel for about a week and I've been playing around with it. Definitely stay tuned for future videos where I will give a long-term review on the product. But with that being said, let's begin with the unboxing and I'll share with you the specification about the panel. Mine arrived in the mail quite quickly. Obviously that can depend on where you are in the world. You can either select this big blue panel to come from their official site, or you can have a look at their Amazon listing. Affiliate links will be placed down in the video description in case anybody is interested. In the box, we get two carabiner loops so we can hook the panel onto a backpack or whatnot. There's only two in the box, so you might want to get an additional two to attach more securely onto other devices. And it does come with an included USB-C cable. You might want to use a different one like the ones I'm using where you've actually got a little display showing you how much power is going into the device that you're using but at least it comes with a cable in the box panel is really well packaged now it's hard to describe what material this is made out of but it's very sturdy which i really like it's an all nylon mixture of a sort of rubber compound but it's very it's quite stiff which is good you, you do want that when you're placing it up against the wall or something like that and on the back we've got the various ports so we've got a dc port the 5525 standard, not to be confused with the 5521. So just keep that in mind. You might need an adapter for certain devices for charging small power stations, which I'll show and demonstrate in the video. And you've also got a USB-C port, which supports fast charging and the PD power delivery. So that's something to keep in mind with that one. And it's also got a USB-A port for charging standard things like, for example, your head torch or something like this. So you've got three ports, which is definitely more than what you've got on the four class as well. And you've got a little LED light showing you if the panel is receiving power. In terms of weight, panel is listed at 850 grams, actually lighter than their previous model. The Big Blue Solar Power 30 is actually using Topcon solar cells. Benefits of using these Topcon solar cells is they are more efficient. They allow more light to be converted into electricity. In terms of build quality, it definitely feels much more robust and stronger and possibly even longer lasting than the 4 class. The 4 class is using a much more lighter, thinner material. And that is one of the reasons why it's lighter. But this panel from Big Blue does feel more robust. So just keep that in mind. I'm pretty sure the entire unit is waterproof. Those ports, you might not want to expose those parts to the rain. But other than that, the panel itself is waterproof. I like the grommets that are located around the sides and around the edges you've got these buttons where you can clip the panel together. In terms of size you can see that the height is about the same as the 4 class solar panel which I think is interesting and then as you can see on either side it's about four centimeters longer on either side in terms of length because this panel when it's folded out is 62 centimeters. And I believe that the four class is something around like 54 centimeters. Their footprint is almost the same size. So in terms of specification for this panel, it's printed on the box and also on the unit itself. It has a claim rating of 30 watts, which I'll demonstrate in a peak performance test later on. And then when it's unfolded, it doesn't actually take up that much space, which is something I was looking for. One of the moments that actually sparked this idea about getting another panel was I recently went on a bikepacking 
trip to the coast and I took my 15 watt panel with me, it worked, but it definitely wasn't able to give us significant power going on a cloudy day. So this is why I want to experiment with this panel on a cloudy day and also whilst on a bike packing trip and see what its performance will be like. The DC port can give up to 17.4 volts. I believe it's actually 20 when it's not under load. And the amperage rating is about 1.73 amps. And actually in my testing, I've been getting exactly what they claim, which is really rare, but that's really good to see that Big Blue are being very honest about their numbers. Obviously, keep in mind with solar panels, heat can play a role in what kind of performance you're going to get out of, out of the panel. Recently in Europe, we've been experiencing some abnormal high temperatures recently. And that's pretty much it for spec. So let's jump into the comparison, testing these panels side by side and seeing what kind of performance we can get out of them. So in terms of comparing these two foldable solar panels, what is the peak performance that I can get out of the 30 watt panel? I've already tested the 15 watt panel in the past, so you can have a look at videos about that. I'm not sure if I was able to capture that on camera, but one time I did manage to get 15 watts, I think, on the four class panel, but that was in winter on a very cold day with a lot of sun. So in order to simulate that in summer with the 30 watt panel, one thing you have to do is basically wait for a partially cloudy day where you've got clouds moving by really fast, but like with strong sun. When you start in the early mornings of the day, the clouds will basically run over the panel and put shade over the panel, cool the panel down substantially. And we had a lot of wind on that day, which was perfect conditions. And then the sun would basically pass by the clouds and then you would get a burst of sunlight and a burst of performance would come through. And it was actually able to sustain these peak performances really, really well. So I was seeing with some different solar generators, I've got, I've got these two mini power stations I tested with it. I did have to use a bunch of different adapters to connect up to that DC barrel port, but the DC port was very consistent. My smaller Vevor power station was able to get a peak performance of around 26 to 28 watts on the larger power station, which can accept much, much higher wattage can go up to 200 watts. I was able to actually get 30 and even 31 watts coming from this tiny 30 watt panel. So it was giving me more on the peak performance. Honestly, I was really impressed with that. Now, obviously those are peak performances. That's on ideal conditions. Another thing to test out, which I was impressed was while the clouds were going over it, I was also still quite impressed with the wattage I was getting. I think I was getting like two or three watts, but that's still pretty impressive with full cloud coverage. Now let's move on to when you're using the other charging ports. And I'll also demonstrate a more realistic setup because not everybody's going to be using a power station to charge up from the 30 watt panel, obviously. I think most people are going to go with a power bank and they want to have a fast charging power bank. As the temperature was quite warm, I noticed that this panel was actually, the 30 watt panel was outperforming the four class when it got really hot because the four class was actually getting super hot compared to the compared to the 30 watt panel from Big Blue. It did beg the question in my mind why manufacturers don't make panels in white more often. If you know the reasons why, maybe leave them down in the comments below. Now, keep in mind that when you're charging all these different types of devices, you might get different numbers. So for the next part of the test, I also tried the USB-C port and the USB-A port. When I tried charging my smaller solar generator with the USB-C port, I was obviously able to get better performance out of the PD connection compared to using the USB-A port. So definitely if you can and you have access to it, try to use the USB-C PD, which stands for power delivery. The maximum I think I was able to get out of the USB-C port was around 20 watts. Now with this knowledge, it's Partly one of the reasons why I bought a new power bank recently, it should be able to charge really, really quickly. So that's a really big benefit. And then it'll charge your smartphone slightly more slowly, which actually improves the longevity of your smartphone battery. So in terms of numbers, when we compare the four class 15 watt panel, I was getting something like six or seven watts coming in. And then when I plugged it from the fast charging port on the 30 watt panel, I was getting around 18 watts. Which was, the, which was the highest I was getting, which was pretty impressive for a very small budget power bank, honestly. And I left it in the sun for an hour to charge. I was actually really impressed with the charging speed. Charging speeds do taper off as the battery gets full. Just keep that in mind. But other than that, I was really impressed. So essentially in this test, what we've found out 
is that this 30 watt panel can charge a small battery bank that supports fast charging up to 18 to 20 watts. And it can charge a small power bank like that, 10,000 milliamps, it can charge it three times faster than the Decathlon 4 class 15 watt panel. Hopefully that's like a no brainer. Now, some of the things that I would like to mention for some constructive feedback and some things to mention about this panel, which for me are not deal breakers, but for other people, you might want to just keep in mind. One thing is that between both of these panels, they do not have built-in kickstands. So you need to make sure wherever you're pitching it, that you can try and put it on a wall or against a tree or something to get the best angle. Another thing that you might want to consider is that this panel is definitely almost double the weight of the 4 class 15 watt panel. I think it comes down to the fact that the 30 watt panel is definitely a more robust, stronger design than the 4 class, which definitely feels lighter. And one of the reasons why it's lighter is it just doesn't feel as robust and rigid. So those are things to consider. But for me, I was really impressed with the numbers that you're getting out of this 30 watt panel. I will leave affiliate links down below and you can have a look at the review, the full review I did on the 15 watt panel in case you're interested in that. For the next video, you might want to have a look at some of my solar generators. I've made some videos on the smaller power stations, and I do have some other videos that talk about a DIY solar system for beginners. So you might want to have a look at that as well. That's it for now, and hopefully see you in the next video.